Hey, this is Aron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the very, very simple particle illusion technique of controlling when text or an image or your logo disappears. And while it's simple, people who are new to particle illusion ask this question a lot because they aren't familiar with the tools. But really, this is super easy. And in fact, this is probably the easiest tutorial I've ever done. So here's the situation. You have an emitter that brings up your logo or some text, as does the one you're seeing here on your screen. But at the end of the animation, the logo disappears. A lot of times, people want to keep that logo up for longer, but they have trouble. The big mistake people make is trying to keep the logo on screen by playing with the emitter parameters. This can be painstaking because altering those already animated parameters is difficult and can throw off the entire emitter animation too, ruining the effect. Instead, let's try something different. In my library window, I have a new emitter. It's about as basic as it gets. You can find this new emitter in the blank library that comes with Particle Illusion. Now I've copied that library and I've added my motion graphics emitter to that library as well. First, in the layer window, I'll right click and choose to add a new layer. And in the layer name dialog, I'll keep the name layer one and I'll click OK. Next, making sure that I'm at the first frame of my timeline, I'll add the new emitter to the stage by selecting the new emitter in the library and then clicking on the stage. Then, just to make sure it's centered, in the timeline and graph area, which is currently showing me the value for position, I'll right click and from the pop-up I'll choose reset, which resets the position centering it. Just note that you may not need to do this in your project. It depends where you want the logo to be. Mine happens to be centered, so that's why I'm doing this. Next, in the hierarchy window, I'll right click on the emitter and from the pop-up I'll choose properties. Then in the properties dialog, which I have to shove over a bit for video capture purposes here, I'll go into the particles tab and in there I'll turn on the single particle option which makes the emitter only emit one particle and holds it for a really long time. I think it's something like 10,000 frames, a lot more than you'll ever need. Anyway, as you can see, in the preview window, we're now looking at a single particle, which in this case is a fuzzy dot. We want to change this to our text or logo or whatever it is we're using. To do that, why don't we hop on into the change shape dialog. And in there, you'll see that I've got two shapes. My basic blur, which is currently in use, and the P-illusion text, which is simply a picture of the text P-illusion. Any shape used in any emitter in your current library will appear here. Since I have the motion graphics emitter in this library, its shape is here as well. You could also import your own logo by clicking on this plus button, which allows you to bring in your own images. Presumably, if you've already created an emitter with your own logo, you know how to do this, so I won't cover that here. So, with the P-Illusion text image selected, choose Make Active, which activates the image. If we look in the preview window, we can see it's going to need some basic work, such as resizing, but we can do that outside this dialog. So, click OK to get out of this dialog, and back in the main interface, I'll move to a frame where I can see the logo animation having resolved and just before it disappears, maybe around 115 or so. Let's bring up the size by going into the hierarchy window and clicking on the particle size property. You may have to open it up by clicking on the plus sign. With the size property selected, head into the graph area and simply raise the size value until it's at a size that matches the original logo animation. In this case, I'm bringing it up to 115 or so. Your numbers will almost definitely be different. And you also might need to play with the emitter's size property as well, which serves a different purpose than the particle's size property. Although in a case like this, they can appear to do exactly the same thing. Anyway, at this point, the rest is super easy. Using the visibility property, you can set a keyframe for visibility. In other words, you can have the new logo fade in and out as needed. So in this case, I'd set my visibility down to zero. Then I'll move to the frame in time where I'd like to have the logo fade on, in this case, probably at around frame 100 or so. Then I'll add a keyframe with a value of zero by clicking on the graph line. Then I'll move down about 15 frames or so, and then click on the graph line and drag it up to 100. If you play it back, you'll see that the logo stays put. If you wanted to fade it out, you'd simply add in visibility keyframes to fade it out. Anyway, I hope this answers your questions and helps you in your work. But let me make a suggestion. If you really want to learn to harness the power of particle illusion, 
why don't you check out Elvis Dean's Creative Cow Master Series DVD, The Apprentice Magician's Guide to Particle Illusion. And when you're ready to move on to an advanced topic like using Particle Illusion with Adobe After Effects, you can check out my DVD, Particle Illusion Fusion Volume 1. You can find those DVDs at training.creativecow.net, where you can also find a bunch of other great training as well. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.